Good morning. Um, we're here to call to order the advisory committee meeting to the De La Guerra Plaza revitalization project on uh, today, Friday, July 31st, 2020. And can we start with a roll call? Yes. Hi, um, my name's Phil, I'm the organizer. I'll quickly start the roll call. Uh, you can see everyone's names on the screen. I'll start with uh, the first name, Chair Sneddon. Here. Thank you. And as soon as I call your name, go ahead and turn your video on so we can see that you're present. All right, moving on, Chair Vice Chair Wiscombe. I'm here. Right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Drury. Here. Thank you, Commissioner Drury. I understand you don't have video at the moment. Uh, Commissioner Vena, thank you. Here. Already ready. All right. Commissioner Reed. Here. All right. Thank you. You can go ahead and both turn off your video. Commissioner Harmon. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Perry. Commissioner Perry. All right, moving on. Commissioner Peterson. Here. Hi, good morning, thank you. And last but not least, Commissioner <coughs> Edelman. <coughs> Commissioner Edelman. All right, well, that concludes the roll call. Thank you. And so we're noting that um, Commissioner Drury and Edelman are not present at this time. No, I'm here. Oh, Drury is here. I'm sorry. I'm oh, Drury's you. here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is uh, Commissioner? No it's Perry. Roger Perry is not Perry. here. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Do we have any announcements? No? No, Chair Snedden, we do not. Thank you, Mr. Hess. And are any changes to the agenda? No changes at this time. Okay, thank you. Well, with that, Mr. Hess, I'd uh, like to hand it over to you and, and see what we have in store for today. Great, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. We're glad to have us all in virtual mode, uh, but glad we're all here. I uh, just want to, um, lay out the expectations for today and just describe what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, we, uh, what at first blush might seem like a lighter agenda, I want to assure you that um, much information and time has been spent um, and accumulated around these uh, three topics. And we're going to touch on um, actually four, but um, we want to touch on the arcade and uh, it's um, all of the, the details around that, restrooms uh, and the trash enclosure, and the fourth would be a, a kiosk. So those four areas, um, three of which for sh are for sure, are the arcade, the restrooms, and uh, obviously we need to have a trash enclosure. The kiosk is something that we wanna talk about as to whether or not uh, it should happen, and if it, if it should, where should it be? Um, so launching into uh, the investigation from the last uh, meeting, um, we met with uh, stakeholders and different groups uh, to collect information, um, bring them up to speed on where we are with things, uh, share with them the layout and get their feedback. And I must say overall, it was uh, overwhelmingly positive and a, a great experience actually to share this layout with several of the groups um, and just hear their excitement over what's, what's gonna potentially happen here. Um, on June 29th, we met with uh, Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation and just some highlights from that meeting. Uh, we, again, we had great feedback. Uh, loved the arcade that some of them hadn't really thought about um, even that concept before. 
um, their concerns were just the proximity to the historic wall and that foundation, and which will come up again later. Loved the shade trees, uh, liked the emphasis of connecting that um, the Casa de la Guerra back with the plaza and the elimination of the street and the, um, the potential with that. Liked the no parking in the plaza as a concept and then overall just um, very positive in terms of where we're going with this. So that was great. We met with, uh, had a Zoom meeting with uh, Old Spanish Days on July 7th. And then that followed with an in-person meeting on July 13th. Uh, again, the Zoom meeting was the opportunity to share with them the, the layout, um, but we got into the, the details of some of the um, excitement when we were in person um, with several of their members. They too appreciated just the inclusion early in uh, this process so that they could um, understand, uh, dream, and then just make sure that we were um, paying attention to some of the things that are uh, infrastructure needs that they need. Um, the biggest excitement, I think, was uh, them imagining the arcade and reorienting uh, Fiesta by 90 degrees, and the excitement was palpable. They were uh, just giddy, and uh, that continued actually in person when we started talking through all the details and the, the potential for that. We got into utilities and uh, their needs, um, how things could work, <clears throat> excuse me, um, for Fiesta. And um, it, one of the things that, uh, again, w relates to the topic of today is when asked um, if the restrooms over in City Hall, in the City Hall parking lot would be a benefit to them, um, they recommended that we actually put the, the, uh, the restroom over in Stork Placita. So, um, it, that's anecdotal, that's just one opinion, but just wanted to, to throw that in there. Uh, and again, just they were very excited about all the possibilities and uh, appreciated being included. Um, I had a, a very long conversation with one of the property managers who manages three buildings that back up to uh, the plaza that are um, located on State Street. It's uh, 740, 732, and 728 State Street. And we primarily, uh, I wanted to talk to, it was Matt Labrie from Lynx, Lynx Property Management. I wanted to talk to Matt really about trash enclosures and, and the details surrounding that because uh, in addition to the tenants that um, are in those three buildings, I've heard it from every tenant actually on that plaza is that this is an issue. It's an issue visually, it's an issue that makes the place feel messy. Um, it's scarring the walls, which you'll see in pictures later. <clears throat> And really, it's it's one of those issues that no one really wants to deal with, but everyone has to deal with. So it's one of the things that we wanted on today's agenda because it is uh, it has ramifications visually uh, and for the design. So, uh, but great a conversation with Matt. We uh, we will continue that conversation with with him as he is representing three of those buildings. Um, I've been continuing to try and contact. Uh, um, Arthur von Weisenberger from the news press, um, he and Wendy, uh, he is my contact primarily. I um, have not been able to secure a meeting with him, but I'm hoping that next week or the following week, um, just to talk about uh, where we are. He has, I believe, seen one of the um, previous videos, and I believe he will be watching this video uh, next week prior to my meeting with him. Uh, RRM had a discussion with Post Hazeltine, who are our historic uh, consultants. Uh, that was on July 15th, and um, they had some great feedback. Uh, one of them was the historic wall that's adjacent to City Hall. Uh, they would prefer that not be hidden. They want to be able to see that. Um, in addition to that, the scalloped wall that's in, in uh, over on the restaurant side needs to be uh, needs to stay. However, we may need to modify. Uh, that wall based on ADA requirements and what our plans are for that area, but we'll see. Uh, we talked about, they talked about the palm tree, um, the historic palm, and their recommendation was to check in with an arborist, which I did. And then uh, the arches they, for the arcade, they wanted us to make sure that we emulated the city hall arches, but not copy them, uh, make sure, making sure that they're uh, distinct. Lastly, they uh, recommended that we extend the arcade actually longer uh, and toward the news press, which you'll see. Um, and as part of that, in order to uh, sort of pay an homage to the to the adobe that was previously where the arcade is is proposed, they recommended that we um, 
uh, tilt the axis of the arcade to be in parallel with the city historic wall. Not with City Hall, but with the wall. So you'll see that in the layout as well. Uh, lastly, I met with Nathan Slack, who's our city arborist on July 23rd to look at the palm. And we ended up having him evaluate three trees. Uh, the first was the, the palm tree, um, it's a California palm. Uh, it's in overall, it's pretty healthy, uh, hard to believe, but true. It is in the grass family. So it's, uh, it's gonna be pretty happy when it's in grass. So my question was what happens when we surround it with hardscape, is that gonna have an impact? Uh, yes, it probably will. We don't know what, um, but uh, those are the types of trees that have been very successful in being transplanted, albeit probably not this big. So he was gonna be checking in with some experts if that's one of the ideas that we have for that. Um, and I will be pretty upfront on this. This is one of those trees that uh, it's right in the way, uh, which we all know, but what do we do with it? And do we need to accommodate it? Or uh, what's what's the, the desire? So this committee will, should wrestle with that. Um, I also had him evaluate the, um, the olive tree that is adjacent to the historic wall, uh, both for health and for what it's doing to the wall. Uh, you will see in pictures that it's having an impact on the structure of the historic wall. Uh, that will only get worse if we elect to keep that olive tree there. Um, it is a beautiful tree, which is why I wanted him to evaluate the health of it. Um, but it may come down to whether or not we want to keep the wall or we want to, or the integrity of the wall or the tree. So um, you will see pictures of that. And the last is, uh, as you, we'll show you a picture of this, but um, if you can visualize that whole side where the arcade is, and as you go down toward the news press, you've got the olive tree. In the next section, you've got um, three jacaranda trees. And then there's another breezeway. And then there's uh, two other trees that are closer to the news press. One is a pepper tree at the very end. Uh, but in between that is a, is a tree called an African Marcamia. Uh, it's a really nice specimen tree. Um, probably the best in the city is what he said. It's not historic and it's not native, but it is a beautiful tree. So um, you'll see that we're ho our hope is that we are able to, with the change in axis of the arcade, uh, keep that tree. So um, I'm sorry for the long-winded briefing, but um, I wanted you to understand that um, a lot has been done. Uh, we've we've tried to really educate ourselves in in multiple ways, meeting with the different people and getting the good feedback, so that what we bring to you is not just um, an architect and the design team's uh, dream in a vacuum, but rather it's it's based on feedback and input from multiple sources. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to Leif McKay to uh, take us through. He and Debbie Rudd from RRM Design Group um, will take the, the rest of the presentation. So thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Can everyone hear me? So just a quick question. Did we have Commissioner Perry join us? Did I see that? Yes. Thank you for noting that. Yes, Roger Perry is now in the meeting. Commissioner Perry is in the meeting. It's just having some technical uh, okay. difficulties, but we solved them. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No problem. Okay, well, it's good to see you all on this sunny uh, Friday morning. Um, that was a a good meaty introduction from Brad. So um, some of these slides will will just reiterate those points. Um, uh, that was a pretty good update. We have been busy. Uh, we'll show you a plan in a minute, and it's not going to look a whole lot different to the last one you saw, uh, except for a few key points that we're going to talk about. Our purpose statement: We uh, not to beat a dead horse, but we like to keep this in the forefront of our minds as we're working through as a touchstone uh, to do uh, as a check and balance on it, all our design ideas. And then if you recall, we, we came up with these, these five vitalities, which again are uh, touchstones for our, for our design concepts. activities that Brad mentioned, there's, a, there's one, uh, one extra one that uh, 
at the bottom there, we uh, the AIA has a downtown charrette committee that uh, Debbie, my, my colleague who's on the, on the call, uh, gave them an update to just a, a mainly out of uh, interest for them and curiosity, but but we did get some good feedback and some some folks reaching out with some some good ideas and maybe some good input. So we'll be we'll be continuing to to engage with them as it seems appropriate. So here's the here's the plan as it has evolved. Um, you'll see it's it's very similar to what you saw last time. Uh, it, the, the patterning on the on the ground plan is is still very very conceptual in nature. We haven't we haven't started identifying materials or or anything like that. It's just to allude to a traditional classic type of geometry and, and spatial arrangement for the plaza. Uh, the things that the things that have sort of changed and we're going to be talking about today is the arcade idea has evolved a little bit. Uh, we've given some thought to restrooms uh, locations uh, and the other couple of things uh, the managing the trash and the, the notion of a cafe uh, kiosk concept we'll also touch on um, you'll see we've we've started to add a little bit more fine grain on the outdoor dining street scene along along the, the bottom of the plaza uh, in front of the, the restaurant cafes uh, we've we've added a label that says splash pad that was that was more ambiguous last time but uh, based on the, the committee's uh, general uh, agreement we've we've gone ahead and just labeled that splash pad and that's what that's the idea that we're going to continue to look at uh, the historic farm is labeled as well so we're first going to look at the arcade. This is a uh, almost 100 years old, give or take, of City Hall um, with some of the features we're going to be talking about as shown. So it's the, the adobe wall that, uh, that stands today and the Abadi adobe that doesn't stand today. So we talked to our architectural historians uh, post Hazeltine about the notion of the arcade and uh, if you recall previously we had a quite a beautiful sketch of it there it is there and that was just our sort of artistic representation of, of how we thought it might look um, some concerns were uh, competing with city hall competing with the adobe wall um, so in conversation with, with them, what we ended up coming up with is we slid it to the right to basically celebrate the wall a little more, allow, allow folks to, to see it front and back. And we also tilted the axis of it so it's no longer square with the plaza, but rather it's parallel to the adobe wall. And that was, that was a little bit of a reflection of the old uh, adobe which apparently by all accounts was on a similar axis to this it has the side benefit of getting us away from a little further away from any potential archaeology from the old body adobe um, that we may encounter during construction so if we slid it forward from that a little bit and then those shadows you can see i'm not sure if you can actually see my cursor but that's the that's the couple of trees that Brad alluded to that we're trying to preserve. Uh, they would form a backdrop. The stage platform feature would, would now be off center. So it's, it's to one end. So it has a, has a slight asymmetry to it. And this middle feature would form a, a somewhat of a portal, a gateway coming in from the parking lot. That's the previous, and we, we, we've, we've done a kind of a crude uh, sort of 3D model of it. This is more of a massing analysis. The, the background isn't quite uh, accurate, but you can see that the relationship of the, the new proposal to the, the news press on the right 
and the city hall on the left, and then also the historic wall between them. So we've given given both the historic buildings on either end of it a little room to breathe, and uh, I feel like it's it's shaping up quite well. It's 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 a little subordinate to the scale and proportions of city hall. The arches aren't quite as high, and it's less ornamented. And then this feature in the middle, that would be aligned with, a, that's a breezeway that goes into the parking lot. So it's, it creates quite a strong gateway into the plaza. This is a photo of that edge. And uh, you can see the four trees on the left of that picture would be removed in order to achieve this arcade concept. And the macamia and the pepper would be behind it. The olive tree, you can see the photo on the right, it's, it's heaving the wall. It's, uh, we, don't, we don't know how old the olive is. Uh, maybe someone on this call does know. Uh, I know a lot of you have a lot of historic knowledge, but, but uh, we feel like the best move for the longevity of the wall is to, to remove the olive. And then that, that, that also helps us free up some extra room for the arcade. Although we could work around the olives with the arcade, that wouldn't be a a primary criteria. The palm tree that, that Brad alluded to. That either way, that's not really part of the arcade conversation, but more about impacts to that particular tree as we pave uh, around it. Okay, so the restrooms. Our last meeting, it was fairly unanimous that there was a need for restrooms uh, in the vicinity. Uh, after much thought, our team has come up with a recommendation to tuck them into Stork or Cedar uh, against the blank wall of the uh, of the commercial building. There, uh, it's it provides the convenience without being taking away from the character and quality of the actual plaza space itself. The footprint would be fairly modest, maybe maybe two or three family uh, family restrooms uh, or something of that nature. And then Fiesta and other, other events would bring in a, a, their usual sort of event porta potties. If you can't picture that exact space, that's kind of where we're talking about tucked around that corner. So that could be quite a discreet uh, installation. It's actually quite convenient off State Street as well, but those existing palm trees help to sort of screen it a little bit. We've also been talking, this is probably a little bit too far down in the weeds at this point, but we've. Uh, this is a, a notion that the city is actually looking into for uh, some other uh, project in the Parks Department. Uh, it's this idea of self-cleaning, self-monitoring restrooms. This is a, an interior of one that is being proposed for Dwight Murphy Field. And the benefits of this, are, uh, it just eases the burden on the city's maintenance staff to do janitorial services. Uh, you can see there's a, this very, it's a very smart system. It, it's got jets that sanitize the floor after a certain amount of washes. It's got, uh, you don't have to touch anything. It's all sensor based. Uh, and it also has sensors in there that uh, supposedly prohibit people from camping out in the restroom. Uh, the doors automatically open after a, a set period of time. You get, you get an alert and then if you wanna, if you wanna stay in there and sleep, the doors will just open. So it, it's, it's really helping cities deal with misuse of public facilities. Here's some other, these are different types of restrooms, but it just goes to show a different approach that uh, we could look at. And these are more single user stalls that uh, you see in, in some cities around the country where they are designed to be more like street furniture in a way, uh, similar to informational kiosks. You can see the one on the left actually has 
a map, but it could have other interpretive elements as well. So that's that's a way to shrink the, the footprint down and make it make it fit more architecturally into a space. Trash. So again, a, a necessary evil. Um, we've we've been talking about how to deal with trash and and what role the plaza should play in or should contribute to this overall problem given that a lot of it's private trash that's been generated from businesses and, and uh, how much infrastructure should the plaza actually uh, provide to help, to help solve the, the issue. This is the, the scalloped wall behind the, the restaurants and, and this is the edge that we are really trying to make a little more open onto the plaza. So our plans envision sort of cafe tables and, and chairs out here under shade trees. So blurring the edge a little bit and the back of house stuff that these businesses have to deal with is, is going to be a problem because we've kind of almost taken away their back door. Um, we came up with a few thoughts. Uh, this is something we're interested in hearing some discussion about today. Uh, of various options uh, you know one would be around the corner in the, in the placida one would be using the arcade to sort of screen it and we put it behind the, the arcade somewhere another one sort of back behind uh, city hall here uh, and another one in the plaza which there's a sort of a stairwell that leads up to the la placida building that maybe we could use to back up to and, and they all have pros and cons. Uh, what we have found is if, if the trash is inconvenient, people just figure out other ways to deal with it, which aren't always uh, very appropriate. Uh, but if we put it, if we make it as convenient as possible, then it's also harder to hide and harder to screen. Something like this over behind City Hall would be quite convenient for trash trucks and screening, but it's it's a slog for these business owners to take their trash over here. So some of the things we'd like to talk to you, uh, to the committee about today. Here's a couple of different sort of ways that trash enclosures have been dealt with in the past. Um, the one on the right's just down the road in Ojai, where the dumpsters have been hidden in quite a, quite a, a very nicely designed enclosure that's that's in keeping with the surrounding architecture. One on the left is uh, is an example of basically a, a small discrete enclosure that just takes a couple of individual bins. So business owners wheel their own bins out, put put it in in a little enclosure like this in front of their business, and and it's it distributes and minimises the size of each one. And then really getting outside the box, we have this uh, concept here of subground, subterranean trash pickup, where if you can understand the concept here, these bins, this is a lift, this is a hydraulic lift. So that drops down to, to ground level. This is the edge of it here. So on any given day, it just looks like a few bins on the ground, but in fact, they're on top of a vault that can be picked up and trash can be wheeled out. So that's, this is quite a, a new technology, especially for the US. A couple of cities have started investing in uh, ideas like this to reduce the, the number of times you need to service the trash. And also it just helps tuck it out of sight and out of mind and make it's much more visually pleasing and, and less, uh, um, more discreet. And finally, the uh, the kiosk cafe idea. This was one that, if you recall at our last meeting, was uh, kind of had split opinions. Some people thought thought it was a very uh, very interesting idea. Um, we use the reference of Bryant Park in New York, which is a very famous public space that I, I believe a few of you were familiar with, as a way to invigorate the space on, on off-peak times uh, and others were less convinced. So 
you just wanted to bring this up again and talk about potential siting for a structure like this uh, that we could study further. Uh, either way, our assumptions were, would be that it would be a small, modest building that probably was just a service uh, facility. Meals would be prepared off-site, pre-packaged and just served out of the window or, or coffees and pastries. Uh, the other thing is the visibility from, from State Street, we believe, is if it, if it doesn't have some sort of visibility to, put, to pull foot traffic back off state, it's probably setting it up for failure. Some more character photos of various installations in parks. That's maybe the architecture is not the same as what we would propose, but the, the character and the size certainly is. So if you if you take that concept and look at our plan, uh, we've got a couple of ideas here. We whoop. Let's get back here. We had we looked at ideas for all over the plaza, including sort of making it more of a focal point. Uh, but what we've kind of like to talk talk about today is the idea of trying to position it somewhere on Elagera Street, where it doesn't detract from plaza experience, uh, it still has enough presence to, to be seen and to pull people in. Um, and, it, you know, what we'd ultimately like to do is not decide yes or no necessarily today, but get a bit more, a bit more direction so we could maybe do some massing studies and three dimensional models so we can help to, to uh, express uh, some, some ideas with you later. So that brings me to the end of sort of the overview of, of those features. I could hand it back to Brad um, and then we can entertain uh, questions, discussion, and maybe go through each point, whatever the committee's pleasure is. Thank you, Leif. Thank you, Debbie. And I, I just wanna reiterate that as we start thinking through this, let's just make sure that we're continually reminding ourselves of those five vitalities and making sure that these are all in keeping with those. Um, uh, now what we want to do is basically get your your opinion, your thoughts. Um, honestly, our desire is to, um, uh, if possible, I'd love to have consensus on the direction the arcade is going uh, with changes recommended, all of those things. I would love to get uh, your thoughts and recommendations on the proposed location for the restroom and or if there are other locations that you feel would be would be better. Um, and then we really need help brainstorming, honestly, about the trash enclosure. Uh, I think that, um, I think Leaf said it best, you know, this is a, um, a necessary evil. It's something though that if, if we don't handle appropriately, it will become a bigger problem than what we already have. So um, those are my desires. So the floor is open. Um, we'd love to, to have your feedback. Mr. Hess, as a point of order, do we have questions at this time? Do we have any public comment before we move to discussion? So first questions from the committee, if we have any. And then, yes, please. Do we have any questions at this time? Vice Chair Whitcomb. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I I wanted to, are, are we discussing all uh, four of these items at once, asking questions on all four of them? We're not, we're not doing the arcade first or anything. No, I think okay. we're discussing any questions that you have on okay. your Okay, I wanted to go to the trash. Um, I really have more comments than questions, but um, the underground system, does that also, for trash, does that also then, um, we're gonna have to have trash bins uh, in the plaza somewhere. So does this underground collection system uh, solve some of that problem? Or can we use, okay, this is what I'm thinking of. You've got the group of businesses on the west side um, 
And I, I happened to run by there this morning and there was a whole bunch of trash. There, there were the wheelie bins and then there were bags of trash piled against the wall. So it, it, there obviously is a problem. Um, yeah, it was in addition to this, there were bags of trash against the wall. Um, so if we incorporated the underground system there, what you're really seeing as a as a plaza visitor is just those kind of sleek bins. Is that correct? And then if that's the case, can those same sleek bins with it, because obviously this is a very expensive system, can those bins be used throughout the park as a standalone item uh, to match what to match the underground system. So when we have, um, you know, we'll have to put trash bins elsewhere in the park, I think, elsewhere in the plaza. So am I asking my question correctly? So do the bins, can the bins stand alone and be emptied? And then we have the underground system by the businesses. That's kind of my question. Lise, did you want to answer that one? Yeah, I, I will try. Um, <laughs> full disclosure: this is a this is a new system to us. We're we're making efforts to research it now. Uh, I believe if if I understand your question, could you have a, a cluster where you needed a cluster and then individual ones around the place to take yeah, more daily right, use? Right, that, that were not part of the underground system, but that, so that all the trash cans in the plaza could match one another. I get it. Uh, I don't know, but we will we'll, we'll endeavour to find out. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your answer. I, I said I, I I don't I don't know the answer to that, but we will we will look into it. Okay. I, I completely understand the the question. Yeah, I'm just I'm I mean this takes care of I, I assume that you're you're planning on having some trash bins in the plaza and other locations. Okay, and then Absolutely. I guess as a as a follow up to that, how difficult do you think it will be for the businesses? Because we had this discussion earlier. How difficult is it going to be for the businesses to wheel their trash across the plaza to a location that's where the trash enclosure is, let's say, in the parking lot? Is is do you foresee this as I mean it's a flat plaza so it's it's not a huge distance. Do you foresee that as a as an issue in terms of trash management? Uh, there are some inherent challenges with it. Uh, it it's and it's part of it's just human nature. You make something right. less convenient, people are less likely to want to do it. Uh, it will be flat, but there's other there are other concerns too, such as like dripping grease or stuff like that that have a potential to stay in the plaza. So I mean, as 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 hand to mouth as we can make that relationship, I think the more chance of success we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then with the and we we're the and we um, know that when it's I'm sorry, go ahead. Go go ahead, Debbie. Yeah. I was just going to say, anytime we're dealing with restaurants, we know that getting the trash cans closer to the restaurants is a better just because there is the leaky and the, um, the messy. Yeah. it ends up dragging it across the plaza might be a challenge. Okay. Okay. So that, that answers that question. Um, and I, I had another question about trash, um, but I think now I, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it if I think of it. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Michelle, uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Still can't hear you.
We can't hear your voice. Do you want to? Okay. Hi, this is Phil. Uh, yeah, I'm working on um, the audio for Commissioner Longstreet. It's um, disabled currently. Um, perhaps we can go to a second speaker while I try to work out the audio. Thank you. Mr. Reed, questions? Yeah, thanks, Chair Snedden. Um, so in terms of the uh, proposed kiosk locations, um, I believe one of them was proposed to be in the yeah lower left-hand portion of this diagram, the uh, previously proposed parking area that connects to State Street. Uh, my question was, um, based on the, the conversations we had in the last meeting, have you guys considered any further or discussed uh, incorporating that into the plaza itself and removing the parking or, or what, what do you envision for that area are you asking if we're incorporating the street itself into the plaza yes okay the uh we haven't made any sort of further progress on the on the uh street itself uh Pending, pending getting further traffic analysis and the future of State Street itself. Okay. If I may also answer though, uh, uh, Mr. Reed, the, the idea has been that from State Street to Anacapa, it would all be one level. Uh, so we would be bringing everything up to curb level. So in a sense, it would be a part of the entire plaza whether it includes parking or not is is up for discussion and mostly due to the fact that we don't know what's what the future of State Street is. If it's State Street is closed permanently, that parking obviously wouldn't happen there. Uh, if it is if it is a thoroughfare because State Street does open back up, there actually still is a possibility of having the kiosk there because um, you just would remove some parking, but it would still pull people in. Okay, great. Um, and then in terms of the arcade, you, you had mentioned feedback from, uh, I don't, I don't recall which group it was, but they showed enthusiasm about, uh, the arcade facility being a substitute for the current stage our city uses for the Fiesta celebrations. Um, it just just in glancing at the diagram, it doesn't seem to have a lot of stage area. What would be the 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 practical vision for larger events? The uh, what we talked about with with uh, old Spanish days was they would bring in a stage and set it up in front of that one. So the arcade would serve as a backdrop for their events. It, it, it may have some infrastructure that, that helps their setup for electrical and, and uh, maybe sleeves for, for, for various rigging they have, but um, this isn't sized for a large concert at all. It's, this would be quite modest uh, in, its, in its scale for smaller events or maybe a speech. Uh, a larger event would come in with a temporary stage in front of it, which which would be flat and paved so they could basically configure it however they needed to. And do you uh, do you think that the orientation of that that larger stage in that location would provide enough room or capacity for um, the public viewing the event? Uh, yeah, we believe so. We, we ran it by, they have a, the Old Spanish Days has a consultant that works with them who's a, an event planner and they were actually quite excited by the prospect. Uh, so we kind of took our cue from them. Um, of course, it's a simple equation of how many people you expect at an event. And if, if, they, if they did have they're concerned about it not being a, enough audience space. So they could re reorient it the way it is today as well, because there's nothing precluding them from doing that. They could bring in a temporary stage and orient it a long way. 
Yeah. Interestingly, when we, one of the things that they said was a challenge for them now is that the space is so long and linear that the people in front of the stage can see it, but it's so long that the people in the very back of the viewing area can't see the stage. So they like the idea that they, it would be more of a wide um, and more people would actually be able to view it in this location than in the original location. Right. Uh, and and lastly, you, you mentioned talking to uh, Matt Labrie, um, but did you did you get any specific feedback from him, property ownership or or business owners about their preferred location for trash enclosures? Uh, Commissioner Reed, no, I did not get a specific um, request. But what Matt and I talked about was really about um, the number of spaces. Uh, you know, we've had trying to consolidate trash in, uh, into enclosures. Um, obviously, it's not an exact science, but it's about convenience. It's about efficiency. It's about keeping everything clean. And if if people will use it, then you've uh, you've had a success. Um, the majority of the users are going to be on the west side. Uh, you know, in the La Placita building, you've got three stories of folks all the way down the restaurants down to the store Placita. So where this is located is going to be really important um, because we need it to be convenient for the for the bigger users. Um, but we didn't talk necessarily about specific locations. His recommendation was two to three different locations, not just one. OK. Um, thank you, Brad. That's that's all my questions right now. And Ms. Longstreet, do we have your audio? I, I think I'm back. We hear um, you. As we continue on the trash questions, um, with the possibility that State Street remains closed, are are we able to look at um, trash on both sides of those buildings? Is there is there any enclosures or any way to deal with trash? at the front of the building rather than just the back. Uh, I will take a stab at this one. Um, the, the, if you think about where the um, where Marburg would have to drive in order to pick up the, the dumpsters, the, the closer we got to State Street, the more we realized that's not going to quite work because that's, they can't drive up State Street at least right now perhaps there's an opportunity uh for certain times for them to pick up uh on state street and then this very much could change for instance you could put it right closer to stork placita then they would just pick up off of state street because it's easier um so some of this is some of this is a i don't know um but if that could be worked in, that would be fantastic. Uh, because then, yes, I mean, if I can even envision putting it in the middle of De La Guerra Street, if um, if we close off that portion um, or put a kiosk there, or it's just a single lane thoroughfare, you could actually create a space specifically for, for the trash enclosures as well. So there, there definitely are um, options, but for me, the, the primary users are going to need to have something close by as well. Well, that's what I was thinking. And I was, you know, my thought is we have to maintain fire truck access and a fire truck and a garbage truck are similar in size. So, you know, it, as we're planning and as things evolve on State Street, we may have more opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Perry. Good morning, everybody. Um, start with a question. Um, with the increased restaurants, the grease service requires a truck to pull up the restaurant to clean out the grease, grease trap. I assume that'll be accommodated. Yes, Commissioner Perry, that will be accommodated. All right. Um, my other issue is old Spanish days, obviously. I like where the stage is. I think it's a cool change but I'm going to question how that'll service the booths across the plaza from there. It was originally positioned so it had the ability to have the sound dissipate out. 
And the other issue is, as I look at the layout, currently I think there's 30 booths that go up on De La Guerra Street. There's approximately 24 in the plaza and another dozen in the Placida. Their net profits were just around $2,000 last year. If they lose booth spaces, it's going to be a challenge for them to continue to put on the event. And if, from the layout, I don't see where they can have the same footprint. So that was actually our question to Sean Malis. Uh, he provided a couple different options. Since our in-person meeting, um, uh, their job was going to be to go back, uh, reevaluate using a standardized size that we talked about, and then really um, uh, do what they feel like would be the best and a most appropriate layout that has potential for growth. Um, both Mike Lazaro and Sean Malis were actually very confident that this would provide at least as much space and most likely more. So that's a good concern and, and we're, we're with you on that concern, but I think they're, they're pretty excited about the possibilities. I'm encouraged to know that Mike Lazaro is involved, so thank you for that. One one thing I'll add is they were very open to looking at this as a launch point for them to reimagine how they do their booths today, and should they do uh, a more structure uh, a booth that is prefab that they pull out, and so they're looking at a at kind of using this as a launch point to reimagine. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, um, Council Member Harmon, I'm aware you don't have a camera to turn on. I want to make sure if you have any questions and also to wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. No, all the questions I had have already been asked. Really appreciate this uh, thorough presentation and conversation. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And, and so um, if there aren't any other questions, I, I had one question, then we'll move to public comment and then we'll we'll thoroughly discuss um, about the arcade. I had two questions really with, with the arcade at the new angle and it's offset. Have we lost stage space with that? Is it less usable stage space? And then the other question I have is at that slide um, with the old Spanish days spatial analysis slide. Um, the stage is showing at the south end of the plaza, um, and I, I thought I understood from our last meeting that that was still the idea, or is this now keeping the flexibility to have the leaders in old Spanish days um, be able to decide what works best for them? I can, uh, I can answer that. So the, I think your first question was, do, does this uh, result in a reduced stage size, and I think it's 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 roughly the same. It it might be marginally different, but it's essentially the same. Uh, your second question was about this slide. This was we 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 created this slide just to to show old Spanish days when we met with them, just to show how their current layout would fit into the new plaza. So. The yellow, the yellow booth is their booth layout today, and that's where their stage is today. And that all fits in this red line. So okay. this was just to illustrate that they're actually gaining quite a significant amount of space all around it that's now flat, whereas this used to be a, a road. So this this is not to say that the stage would would end up going here or here it's just to show that that there's a net increase in usable space for them so this still allows them the flexibility to be able to plan either way it, it does yeah okay. and that, that they were they were really excited their initial their initial reaction was one of opportunity i would say okay thank you that's my question yeah and if, yeah Red, if you have something to add and then we'll go to public comment Um, Madam Chair, if I could add one other thing, and that is that um, as important as Old Spanish Days is to this community and to have a celebration like Fiesta is, is amazing, uh, it is only one user of this 
plaza. So I just want to make sure everyone is reminded that as you look at the slide right now, um, what we're trying to envision is uh, what other opportunities are there the rest of the year for smaller acts, for art exhibits, for um, different functions that can utilize either a stage space or some additional shade space or some creative uses within that. So we're trying to create a, a very flexible space that's also providing a beautiful backdrop. So just want to make sure everyone is reminded that we're not designing this for Old Spanish days, although they are extremely important. And we certainly want to keep flexibility for all of our treasured events. Thank you. And public comment now. Hi, uh, we'll start public comments and uh, just and bear if, with me. And if yes. any other committee members would like to um, turn their cameras on for public comments, I think it helps when people are calling in to be able to see faces if they're watching. Thank you, Vice Chair Wiscom. Hi. Uh, We'll be going over public comment, just so everyone's aware. Uh, anyone attending the meeting can speak for up to two minutes, and then I'll go uh, call on anyone who wishes to speak one at a time. And just so you know how to raise your hand, uh, just follow the instructions on the screen, and I'll see if anyone has their hand raised now who wishes to offer a public comment. All right, so I have one hand up. And we have Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn, I will unmute you. And that way, uh, when you're ready to speak, I'll start the two minute timer. Thank you, Marilyn. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for a great meeting. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for meeting. It's a great meeting so far. And uh, next time, I'll have to figure out how to review the plans beforehand. <laughs> I can't really see anything, but I think you're doing a great job. So thank you. That's all I have. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Okay, bye bye. All right. All right, any else from the public who wishes to give comments? Uh, now's the time to do so. Please go ahead and just uh, push the button to raise your hand. All right, I see we have another request uh, to speak. Uh, Mr. Jamie Sloan, uh, I will unmute you now, and then I'll start the timer whenever you are ready to speak. Okay, great. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, great to see. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me? Yes, okay, yes. I'm getting head nuts. Um, so yeah, great to see the new drawing, lots of new fun stuff happening that's exciting, I think that will be helpful to uh, to the plaza. Um, with my location, of course, uh, and probably being the only business that really is directly frontage to the actual um, revitalization that's happening here, I, I follow uh, I'll follow along as much as I can. Um, I see a whole bunch of uh, fabulous new trees that are going to be on the uh, north side of De La Guerra Street in a row uh, going to the east uh, of our tasting room there. One of them, it appears, might be directly in front. So questions that come up for me are what type of tree is being considered? Uh, what's the specific location in relationship to our storefront? Uh, will it drop anything at certain times of year? Um, you know, we have a small patio space currently that actually fronts De La Guerra Street. So I'm just kind of processing all this and then the other thing that i wanted to bring up the second thing was is that i know i've spoken with brad hess a few times but in light of some of the new developments and the new um uh you know plans for the plaza and how this is coming along i wonder if any construction projected dates 
might be uh, evolving um, specifically what dates are being considered right now to begin and how long. Um, yeah, because we're, you know, with us directly in front, COVID going on, um, the new desire for people probably post COVID to be outside uh, more often, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal for us. So just inquiring and um, thanks again. I just, I'll uh, stand by and hear some of the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Hess, I see you, your camera on. Did you want to address that question? Yes, Madam Chair, if I could. Um, thanks, Jamie, for your comments. And um, uh, as I explained to several people this last week, it's it's been a, quite a process actually for me personally to sort of recalibrate my expectations on this project. And uh, I think I had delusions of grandeur of coming in and making this, uh, getting this plan together and a matter of months and what I've come to realize is that this is not only incredibly complicated taking um, so many different voices and concerns into play and trying to balance it all out but also just realizing that this process is is important to take a long time uh, or a longer time because the each of the items that we are discussing for instance like today they have ripple effects. They have ramifications that we all need to consider and and look into the future. So, with your, respect to your question of construction dates, um, uh, I have no idea. Um, I, I would venture to guess that by uh, first quarter, second quarter of next year, we will have a layout that this committee has decided that meets their expectations, and then it will go through the normal development plan process. So, uh, that's when we will. Um, experience the, the city's process, which, as you know, can take a while. Then on top of that, we would have uh, construction time. So um, once we get through this process of creating this concept plan, I think we'll have a better understanding of where we are with construction projection dates. I hope that helps. Thank you, Mr. Hessen. Do we have any further public comment? No, I don't believe I see any other requests to speak. I don't see any other hand raised. So at this time, uh, public comment is concluded. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Vice Chair Wiscombe and Mr. Hess, how would you advise, should we take it topic by topic or would you like us to each give our full comments for discussion um, on all the items at a time. Uh, Madam Chair, thank, thank you for the question. If, if we can, um, I think it might be easier if we have, if Mr. Hess feels we have the time to do it uh, one by one and just quickly go through and then we can see where we have consensus on an item and where, you know, we need further discussion on another item. That would be my suggestion. Thank you. So one topic at a time and remembering that we're focusing on just the arcade, the restroom, the trash. And did you want input today on the kiosk? Further input on kiosk. Okay. Yes, please. So really focusing on those four issues. And then um, we can either uh, go through the roster and make sure that we touch on everyone or as a topic comes up, turn on your camera. If you have comments on that particular one, um, I imagine we're probably all going to have comments on all of them. Um, so <laughs> why don't we why don't we do it with the camera? And um, I will be sure on each topic, Councilmember Harmon, to um, to uh, make sure that you've had an opportunity to just chime in there, and we'll take a topic at a time. So let's start with the arcade. Oh, I'm Vice Chair Wisconsin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just lead off with my comments. Um, I like the concept of the um, asymmetrical approach lining up with the uh, Adobe wall. Um, and I also appreciated um, Mr. McKay's comments on giving the buildings on either side room to breathe. So I thought that the location was really good. Um, in terms of the olive tree heaving the wall, I think um, 
you know, history takes precedence here. So that's this is a historic plaza. So my vote would be to, I know when we met with Mr. Hess uh, before this meeting, we talked about root pruning and apparently that's not a possibility um, that it would compromise the tree. So I, my vote would be to remove the tree. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Longstreet on the arcade. I agree with Ms. Uh, Wiscombe's comments. I like the new placement a lot. I also, um, from the drawings, it looks like it provides some casual seating on a day-to-day -day basis, which would be a wonderful um, amenity in the plaza. Thank you. And do we have any other um, discussion, just, Mr. Reed, on the arcade? Oh, yes, Ms. Wiscombe. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I, could we uh, uh, take off the slide on the public comment and put the plan back up? I think that would be uh, more appropriate at this point in time since we're in discussion. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Excellent suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for the uh, suggestion. Uh, we'll do that right now. Thank you. Leave, I will switch to you as the presenter. And Mr. Reed. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I think uh, you asked us to consider each component in the context of the five vitalities of our mission statement. And this arcade, in, in my opinion, nails all five of them. Um, I, I initially was a little hesitant when you said you would tilt the axis of the arcade, but I think it's brilliant. I mean, I think it it's architecturally really interesting. Um, it, it, it does something for the historical assets, assets around it in a positive way. And functionally, I think it, it, the orientation and that tilted access lends itself to a, a, a better functionality in the plaza itself for events. So um, it's beautiful, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Council, oh, uh, Ms. Peterson, yes. I, I just wanted to add to the kudos for um, the revised arcade. I liked it originally. I like it even more now. Uh, I really appreciate giving that historic adobe wall pride of place there. Um, I also like that it's transparent and that idea that uh, the gate in the middle can be another point of pedestrian access uh, to the plaza. So it's, it's very welcoming and inviting um, from that parking lot area. Thank you. And Council Member Harmon, do you have any um, further input? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, just a similar kudos. Really, really love this concept. Um, and I agree with Vice Chair Wiscombe. Um, wish we didn't have to, but I, I think removing the tree, that would be my vote if that's something we're supposed to comment on, unfortunately. But just the concept is really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Well, I, I think if, if there's no further discussion on that, that sounds um, either by non-comment or comments unanimous that we love the arcade uh, direction. And Ma Madam Chair, I think Mr. Drury's there, is he not? Mr. Is Drury, do you have a comment on the arcade? Well, I've been muted the whole meeting. The organizer muted me about the beginning oh. of the meeting and I haven't been able to, I had, I have an hour's worth of comments and questions. <laughs> oh, well, let's catch up <laughs> so with I'm you, glad to be back. I apologize. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. It was a button that wasn't pushed or something. So um, let me think. Um, I, I do have a question. Are we, are we on topic? And could you tell me the topic? Cause I've got a whole list. We're on the arcade topic. Oh, and, okay. Well, um, and I apologize that you missed the opportunity for questions, but you can always now is a good time for questions. Well, that you, well you can imagine I'm half Irish, so I'm I'm half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I think the the whole I agree with the kudos about this presentation from Brad and and the the uh, presenters of the project itself. I think we they've done a fabulous job listening to us, and uh, it's it's gonna sh it's shaping up to be something really historic. I'm really 
uh, proud to be a member of this com committee. I, I think that the the arcade is, is terrific. Um, I do have a couple of questions about the tree arrangements. Are we going to do that by topic, or should I just continue? I, I think you should ask the questions you need okay. to ask, especially because you didn't have an opportunity earlier. Okay, I'll make it quick then. Um, I wondered if the tree arrangement, which is just on the perimeter of the of the um, existing plaza, is is traditional, or if there are traditional um, plazas in Spain or Europe, Mexico, that have trees sort of randomly placed for shade, because it it still leaves the the center of the plaza like a pretty hot spot on a day like today, or you know, a heat wave. So that's the first question. Um, I wondered if I, I would also agree that the olive tree needs to come out. I think history trumps the olive tree. And I wondered um, if the pepper tree was native, which is not really a big deal. I mean, and I mean, I think the restrooms, um, I, I guess the overwhelming question for me, uh, and probably for Commissioner Vena, is these plans will, will perforce come to the Historic Landmarks Commission. I think is I think that's where they would end up as and being presented in a in a formal manner. That's probably just a question, but I just wrote down HLC review and I'm I'm with a question mark. And I do have a question then on the trash. Do, it, will it provide if we went with building with a building a an a semi attractive trash enclosure for sort of a collecting point for those businesses that have food food courts out back. Would there be access from by Marburg down that down the west side of the plaza? That's a question. Um, and mm. let's see. Um, yes, and then I guess I guess that would also tie in with vehicular access for garbage trucks, emergency and service vehicles in the plaza itself. And I'll I'll leave that. That's those are my questions. And, and we have Mr. Hess here to answer some questions. And I'm I'm wondering, Mr. Drury, if we could break that up into the topics as we as we okay. go mr Hess can answer questions now and then we'll okay go yes yes quick. please I have, i'll have comments but they will be short <laughs> we have time yeah okay uh madam chair commissioner jury uh real quickly um yes we will be going the two hlc you are the governing board for this project um the all access that you see that needs to go into the plaza whether it be for emergency or for back of house services like trash, all of that will be accessible on this um, this surface. So that won't be an issue. Um, you had you brought up restrooms, but you didn't ask a question. So let's bring that back when you um, have the topic. Okay. And then um, with respect to the pepper tree being native. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that question, but I also know that it's um, if you're referring to the one that's the closest to the news press, it's a um, what we're looking at is not necessarily whether it's native or not, or it's it's more of um, is the specimen worthy of keeping, and in this case, absolutely. Okay. Um, so um, the last thing I will say is as far as the tree arrangement and what we would call the landscape plan for this, this is just preliminary. Those are the things that are giving this some some softness so that you understand that we're, we're paying attention to it. It isn't by no means a, a part of the discussion yet in terms of evaluating it. Okay, um, other, thank you. So hope that helps. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then Mr. Hess, are we ready then to take input on restroom? Would that be our next topic? Uh, if there are no other comments on the arcade, absolutely. Thank you. So. Savannah, yes. Hello. 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 You're on. Uh, sorry to take so long, <laughs> Madam Chair. Uh, regarding the arches, just the arcade and so forth, perhaps you might even consider another additional arcade on the opposite side to complement that one, and also make it a nice entry from Stork Placita and uh, tie it into the proposed. Uh, restroom locations and possibly trash on that area. That's all I have for now, thank you. And the pepper tree, I love the idea of scattering more pepper trees throughout. Thank you, Mr. Vena. Do, do we have any other comments um, with the idea of considering a second 
arcade on the other side. Does anybody else want to comment on that? Uh, Ms. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Um, am I still? No, I'm not muted. You're not Madam muted. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Drew. I would like to. I would like to see a, a, that idea explored in a, in some drawings. I'd like to see it, that kind of have some some life to it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Vice Chair Whitcomb. Um, I think it's an intriguing idea, but my initial thought is that we're I like the openness of this plaza, and I think that this arcade, as it's designed, is is you know with the pass through to the parking lot is is really nice, and I like the openness on uh, the the. Are you talking about the west side of the plaza, Mr. Vena? Is that are you talking about? Is that where you were thinking? Yes, off of uh, De La Guerra Plaza and headed for State Street. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm um, I'm thinking that I, I really love the openness of this and the flexibility of this. So that's kind of where I've come down on it. So. Any other comments on that before we move on to discussion of restrooms? Uh, Mr. Reed. I think it's a, a clever idea. Um, my hesitation would be the uh, proposed outdoor dining and facilitating access for those restaurants on State Street. Um, it would it would really block them in and probably defeat that purpose, but certainly something I, I think would be interesting to look at. Thank you. So we have an openness to look at it and, and possibly um, a leaning towards not implementing, but to look at what that might look like. Uh, Ms. Longstreet. Uh, yeah, I would have concern on that entry into the plaza because we're talking about restrooms, a building, um, and that it becomes just too tight, too cluttered. It's not a very big space. And um, it would just, it seems like too much for that area and might detract from your entry into the plaza. Thank you. And Ms. Peterson. Yeah. We can't hear you. Sorry, I agree with Commissioner Longstreet and Chair Whitcomb that I, I really like the openness and transparency in connection with State Street. And um, I think we, we're adding a, a lot of new built infrastructure here and we want to be, um, and you know, having one arcade with, with the stage, um, I think is, is, is enough and it, it gives that a very um, kind of significant place there. And um, I, I'm not so interested in, in adding more. Thank you. Okay, so that sounds like not quite as much interest, um, but perhaps we can leave that in the hands and, and, and see if something comes of that, but it doesn't sound like there is a sort of consensus around that at this time. Uh, let's discuss restrooms. And Mr. Um, Madam oh. Chair? Yes, Mr. Drury. Yeah, I, I, of course, I'm in favor of restrooms. I think the idea of putting it in the Stork Placita is brilliant. And I would just, I think it'll be just up to the, uh, whoever uh, draws it up, what kind of architectural style it would be, which doesn't seem to be much of a mystery, downtown, especially in that little corridor. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And Vice Chair Wiscombe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am I am in agreement. I think the Stork Placida blank wall is a perfect place. Um, I looked at it again this morning, and I like the fact that the existing palm trees will screen it from the plaza. And I also uh, appreciate the fact that if you go to use the restroom, and you're you're a visitor on State Street, and you go to use the restroom, which some people probably will, that they go, oh this is a nice open plaza back here let's go explore that i think that's that's a really good feature of that um 
And in terms of the restroom concept, uh, although it, it looks really expensive in terms of maintenance, I think this self-cleaning concept is, is probably pretty essential in this location. Um, and I also appreciated the fact that after a certain amount of time, the doors will open and you're, you know, you haven't chosen to um, do unsanctioned activities in the restroom. I'll put it that way. Misuse. So, <laughs> misuse of the rest. That was, that was, yes. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Longstreet. Um, I agree with those concepts and I, I like the idea of two family style restrooms. We know that whenever there's an event there, there needs to be um, extra facilities provided. So we're not providing facilities for big events. But the two to three family style, I think, is what we're after with all of those amenities that keep them safe and clean. Uh, the one thing I would say is it would be helpful if we put the kiosk near the restrooms to keep eyes on the restroom for misuse so that we have the most amount of positive use near the place we tend to have our most problems. So that's an idea if that wall would accommodate two family restrooms and a small kiosk or something, that would be my idea. Thank you. And Mr. Reed. Uh, yeah, Chair Sneddon, I, I have a question on the adjacent structure to the proposed restroom location. I, I believe it's 725 State Street. Is is there any historical significance to that structure? Perhaps Mr. Head? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Reed, I'm not, I'm not actually sure other than the fact that it's been there. I, uh, I don't have um, the historic structures report in front of me and I apologize. So I will have to get back to you with a, a, a formal answer. Okay, Madam Chair. Mr. Drury. Uh, yeah, I, I think that all the, that whole facade all the way down to, to Ortega is, is post, eight, post 1925 earthquake. So there is some significance I'm quite sure in every one of those buildings, but the historic structures report would set, settle that problem. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Reed, would you like to request that, that we have a, a historic structure evaluation of that? That would be great. Like and and my, own, my only consideration, um, if there is historical significance, and even if there isn't, I, I, it looks like the elevations are slightly higher than the, uh, the lower roof line at 725 State Street. So, um, just, uh, just a consideration of potentially pushing that proposed restroom location back towards State Street. Um, mm. I think you still benefit from the screening and it, it might serve a more functional purpose as well. I think Ms. Longstreet's comments about if a kiosk was, uh, desirable for the project in general, I think that's a really clever idea and um, beyond just self-policing the, the, the restroom facilities, I, I think that's a, that could be a positive location. So I, I like that comment. Thank you. And Mr. Vanna, did I see your camera come on? Were you? Yes, you did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, you did, Madam Chair. Um, I like the location of the restrooms as proposed. Perhaps some of the trash might be on the other side of it towards State Street for the convenience of the and closeness for the restaurants that are in the plaza itself. Just a thought. Okay, thank you. And uh, Council Member Harmon, did you have a chance to weigh in on the restroom? I didn't, but I think um, I'm in agreement with what I've heard from pretty much everyone. Really appreciate that these are um, accessible for families. Um, I think that's gonna be really important to what we're looking to build in this space and um, agree with, I think everyone who said the self-cleaning and unlocking functions are uh, of paramount importance to making this space comfortable for folks, particularly families, that's what I was thinking about. I also am intrigued by the idea of putting the kiosk within 
some sort of eyesight or whatever that looks like of the restrooms. I think not only for the sake of safety and rule following, it also makes sense if you're you know, buying food and beverage, you may be more likely to need to use the restroom. So mm -hmm. I think there's some synergy there beyond just uh, enforcement and making sure folks are following the rules. So I, I really like that idea and would be interested um, in, in seeing what that looks like. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I'll echo those sentiments. I mean, I think that um, if we're hoping for Delaware Plaza to be a place where people linger and meet or gather, um, having restrooms is essential. I am very much in favor of the self-cleaning option. I think um, it makes that more inviting and usable for everyone. Um, the family restroom seems to be a must. Um, just any of us have, have had young children at this area in State Street. It's very difficult, and especially now that um, Nordstrom closed, Macy closed, that there just isn't a restroom that's accessible and easy to use. Um, so I think that's really important. I, I like the idea of stepping it back, and it may have just been a visual with the with the um, roof line of the the restrooms and the the awning of the other building. Um, but I do like that that it's being balanced there, um, and that the kiosk. Well, we'll get to the kiosk as a separate a separate topic. Um, but I'm I think it sounds like we're in consensus and Mr. Reed, I see you for a comment as well. It sounds at this point that we're in consensus with the location, um, but we would like a, a evaluation of the a historic significance of that um, facade and, and um, we'll go from there. Mr. Reed. Yeah, thanks, Chair Sneden. I, I was just it, it came to mind um, thinking back to when I was a kid with my parents walking in that part of State Street, that Placida was a very scary place. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, very scary. Like I, that was uh, that area that there was no other part of the downtown that scared me more than the Placida. And uh, and since it has been cleaned up and maintained. Um, so I just think in considering a restroom location, um, that would be my I think it's a good location, but that it, it I like it, it. It brings back those fearful memories as a kid. I don't want that to return to what it once was. And I think if there's other ways to activate um, that placida and and bring people into that area beyond just uh, restroom facilities, it, that would be positive. Um, so just a little anecdote. That's an excellent <laughs> comment, Mr. Reed, and I share that experience. And then there was a time then when there was a fountain and that seemed to do something positive. And then, um, but I also have that you'd walk around the whole way rather than go um, <laughs> go through there. Yeah. So thank you for actually mentioning that, that we do <laughs> um, want to keep it to be an inviting and welcoming space for everyone. Yeah. Um, I would say in 25 years on Parks and Recreation, it has been a challenge for all 25 years. <laughs> and there have been numerous things tried to, you know, make it a, a an active place and the activity just never seems to be what we want. Mm -hmm. Well, let's activate that placita. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, okay. And Vice Chair Wiscom? <laughs> what? Well, well, <laughs> Once I finish laughing about all these all these stories from the past, um, <laughs> I appreciate the comments. I just wanted to add that I really appreciated uh, Commissioner Longstreet's comments about uh, putting the kiosk there. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it seems like quite a few members of the committee are are for that idea because that does activate the area and makes it less less scary for Commissioner Reed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, you know, next we were to talk about trash, but why don't we talk about the kiosk now, since it seems to um, naturally flow from our discussion of the restrooms. <laughs> um, and do we have input, other input on that, on the location, or if there is to be a kiosk? I think that was still in question, and if there is to be one, where the location might be. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Gurry. Um, yes, I, I think the, the, the plaza needs a kiosk. 
I didn't consider it at first uh, opposite the restroom, so I w- it would be against the wall of the, of the next building down, right? I would assume. I'm all for it. And I, I haven't shared those scary experiences because I was grown up, but still, I, I went across the street. To <laughs> some, some, something got in the way. But so I would, I would appreciate a kiosk there. I think that the, the other the place I was favoring first was the corner of Delaguerra and the plaza as you come off of State Street. I think there was a, that was one of the locations that were, were, was on the map. That seemed like a good place too, but I do like the idea of, of energizing the plot, that little placita. And as, as far as the architecture goes, what was proposed in those photographs, I think would be really attractive. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't need a tile on the roof to fit. And I would, I would be in favor of the proposal that, that the, the proposers proposed. Thank you. Thank you. And then I've lost track of, is it, um... Vice Chair Wiscombe, did you turn your camera on first? Or, okay, thank you. I, I don't. I don't have much to add. I already. I agree with Commissioner Longstreet about the location. Um, I think that's a great place. Um, one of the comments from the designers was that it needs to have visibility um, from State Street, so it's important to the success of the kiosk. I think that's a great location, and that ticks off that box. Um, and keep it small. Uh, they talked about food prep elsewhere and just, you know, being able to deliver food and serve it there. Um, so I'm, I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Longstreet. I agree with those comments. Um, I, I would be less inclined to have us do a huge design, build this wonderful thing when we don't yet know what we're doing with it. I'm I'm more inclined for something that we're, tr- this seems to be something we're trying and we wanna make sure that we're not um, wedded to some design that doesn't turn out to work. So as we look at it, um, some of those, for lack of a better word, prefab or less intensive, you know, designs would make more sense to me as we start knowing that we could always advance that design later. But um, I think we have to see in these times how things work, but we should have an opportunity to give it a try. Thank you for that comment. And thank you. And Mr. Dana. Well, looking at it, uh, assuming it's the dot there by Casa de la Guerra going towards State Street, I think we have enough restaurants around to supply coffee and other amenities of that sort. I believe that uh, we might think of that space in more clarity as opposed to putting a structure there of convenience when you have restaurants right around the corner that supply coffee. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that was my thought actually about at the other end um, at De La Guerra and State is there Starbucks there, there are other coffee shops there and it um, seems to me less desirable location. Um, so would you, Mr. Vena, not have a kiosk at all or at a different location? Oh, you're muted. Okay, this is not working here. Just just a moment. Okay, okay. now you are. Uh, I would opt for not having it at all. Okay. Um, so to 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 your point and um, Ms. Longstring's point, I think in the same way, I, and I see Ms. Peterson, in in the same way that we've now drawn a circle that says splash pad, but there's a lot more that needs to happen in the consideration of what that feature is. Um, it is sounding like we have consensus with with the placement and to start working with it as a location and then with further discussion as plans develop. And um, Ms. Peterson. Uh, yeah, initially I, I um, didn't really see the need for the kiosk or some kind of coffee service, but I, I really did listen and try to learn from uh, our planning consultants about the importance of having access to, to quick drinks and food as a way to encourage people to uh, linger and enjoy the plaza. And uh, so I've kind of come around on that a little bit, but um, 
I also I agree with uh, Commissioner Vania about um, that location um, next to the Starbucks and, and plenty of other sort of fast service um, opportunities around. Um, but I, I do like the idea of considering what it would look like to have it in Stork Placida um, and a, a way to activate that, um, keep it safe, uh, you know, keep people sort of um, mingling there and uh, attract activity into the plaza. Thank you. And do we have it? Hi. Any? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Madam Chair, we actually, uh, I know we're already over the time, but. Oh, I'm we sorry, had... I have not even been paying attention to the time. Oh, no, that's fine. I uh, am all uh, yours for the meeting. So, uh, but we had a follow up question from a member of the public. Uh, Wanted to know if there was time to uh, provide just clarification to a response that was given. I, I think we have a, a quick time for that. Do you have the question or do we need the speaker right. to come on? Uh, I think I could paraphrase the question. It was just uh, a comment from Mr. Jamie Sloan on, uh, it's just a clarification on what type of trees they're going to be. I believe Mr. Hess responded that we're, it's still in development and not That's what I heard as well. entirely decided yet. So just no, these are just give that clarification. In the drawing okay. to soften the image and these are in no way decided or proposed it locations or types at this time right it's, okay that's what i assumed you this all conceptual as of now and there was a comment uh, oh it was a question that instead of a hand raised during the public comment so i didn't see it uh, in time it was from mr uh, uh, dennis whalen he just asked about um if there is any, uh, he had a question about the design of the pavement and if it was the level was going to be raised at all. At this ground. point, so. we don't have um, design to raise the level and it's conceptual, um, just that it will be pavement, but not yet um, what it is or what the designs will be. Um, if that helps answer the question and I'm not sure if Mr. Hess wants to weigh in on that as well. Madam Chair, you're exactly right. Uh, at this point, all of this is conceptual. When you look at the the plan that's on there, those are patterns, but we haven't gotten into materials yet. Um, the concept is still to have everything one level from building to building. That has not been formalized yet, but that is the concept. So again, just preliminary. Thank you. And then I do want to do a check in on time since we are um, seven minutes over our allotted time and we have not yet discussed trash, which is actually a pretty big topic. Um, do we have, uh, is, is this, I, I think maybe we do a round of comments if people have time and maybe we can uh, address that quickly, Mr. Hess, or do you want to, yes, we need to, okay. Madam Chair, that would be much appreciated. Uh, this is a big topic. Okay, thank you. So we'll, um, Mr. Reed, if you want to have a final comment on the kiosk. Madam or, Chair, uh, yeah. may I make a comment about the kiosk? Yes, please, Ms. Harmon. Thank you. Yeah, I just um, wanted to express my support for moving forward to think about them and potentially include them. I have seen in other spaces similar to this, the impact and influence a kiosk has in encouraging people to go and stay and enjoy. And I really... Um, feel strongly that if we can get the concept right, it could be a, a very positive addition to this. So I just wanna um, put my name down as in favor and looking forward to seeing what develops, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. I apologize, I didn't um, flag that, thank you. And Mr. Reed, do you want to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chair Sun. So I, I think that there's a ton of upside to a kiosk. I think if uh, there's a lot of ways it can go sideways as well. If F and B or food and beverage is the main focus of the kiosk, I, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Vena's comments about considering the context of what's around it. Um, this isn't going to be a full service restaurant. There's not going to be a commercial kitchen in the kiosk. So thinking about what could be served out of there, coffee, ice cream, uh, cold drinks, smoothies, 
Well, I mean, we have McConnell's, Starbucks, blenders, all those things in close proximity. And so I would, I, I don't think it's in the spirit of our mission to bring competition against those businesses. Um, so I think an F and B use could, could be well executed and it could be successful without, um, bringing too much competition to the immediate businesses in the area. But I think, um, I liked, uh, Ms. Longstreet's comments about really trying to shrink the, uh, the size of this. It can always, it can always grow, but considering the kiosk to be, um, multi, functional. Uh, so maybe if an F&B use uh, wasn't viable, wasn't working, it could shift to some other use. It could be a historical resource, um, considering that is kind of the cornerstone of this project, um, something even operated by Ms. Peterson's department. So mm -hmm. just, just uh, being conservative with it, I think, is uh, of value. Thank you. And flexibility, I think, is also key in that. Thank you. Okay, so trash. And this is one of our really bigger topics. Um, if we have discussion on on the, the trash issue of location and um, how to um, manage what's happening to that wall. Madam Chair. Mr. Drury, yes. May I, may I jump in? Please um, do. So, of the of the options that were were shown, there was that space age option, which is an underground vault, um, which is attractive, but I think it doesn't really go with the architecture of the plaza. The one that seemed to me to be the most coherent was the one that was a a, a structure, a, not a standalone, but against a wall, as I recall in the photograph. Um, Can you see the image now on the screen? Uh, let's see. It's that one, that one with the green green okay. gate and on the, the brick. Okay. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, that seemed to me uh, to be the most attractive and the one that could fit the best. I'm assuming it would go against the, the east facing wall of the plaza and in pr proximity to those restaurants because that's where most of the trash is gonna come from. I would expect those, those food establishments along that, that scallop wall and, and beyond. So I, I would think something like that would be a good place to start. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Drury. I think at issue is that it m might not go along that scalloped wall, but it's causing damage along that wall. And, and maybe Mr. Hess could weigh in on that. But I, I think um, part of the discussion right now is where it, where where it, it should go. go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I if I may, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Drury, I think the, the 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 challenge is is that we're talking about a volume that is greater than what you're seeing on that um, on that left picture. I believe that's going to house a couple bins, but what we're no. really looking at is an enclosure that's going to handle more of a dumpster style, um, so that the multiple locations can then put their trash and recycling into uh, a larger space. So. Um, but if you like that style of look and it could go adjacent to a building um that's direction enough that we can that we can work with and we're i think we're still going to need with the amount of volume that we're talking about i still think we're going to need two locations at least so um that, we appreciate your comments thank you well i would revise my comment then because that's the, actually the nuts and bolts is the amount of trash and i think that the the photograph on the right um, that would house dumpsters in an, in an attractive architecture. I think that's, I would go with that. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Longstreet? I think the usefulness is, of course, the key to it. We have to also be considerate of events. I think having it on the other side of City Hall, at City Hall just does not work. Um, there's going to be too many times when you don't want a restaurant dragging their trash across the <laughs> plaza besides all the other aspects to that. Uh, I don't feel um, that this is a an issue that I can add to. You know, it's it's technical. It involves the, the disposal, the businesses, um, 
the codes. I just, I really feel like we can look at what it looks like, but um, it has to be established based on the facts. And it might, uh, it, that's really all I have to add about. Thank you. And Mr. Vena. Well, whatever is decided, I think it has to go more in keeping with the type of architecture mm -hmm. that will go well, that the that the historic landmarks committee is looking to see more historically and more in a Mediterranean design of sorts. Thank you. Thank you. And Vice Chair Wiscom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm with uh, Commissioner Longstreet on this. I I, I really think this is um, it, the volume of trash needs to be analyzed and then the size of the enclosure do we need two enclosures um i i, I just i don't feel um confident commenting on this at this time i i think that there needs to be more work done um and i think there are opportunities here but it it, it it's going to be driven by design and it's going to be driven by access and those are two things that um that i don't feel comfortable commenting on thank you so would we like to direct staff to continue to work with the restaurants and the businesses there to to get a, a better idea of the the scope and then we're looking at more of the design elements and not that, I, I think I think that's it. It's it's volume. Uh, you know how much trash is going to be generated. Um, I totally agree that we need to get it away from the scalloped wall, definitely, and um, uh, put somewhere that's a little bit more inconspicuous. But um, I don't I don't know where that is at this time and and how big it has to be. I just don't have a good feel for that. So I, I agree with you, Madam Chair. That's that's what I would like to do. Thank you. Thank you. And I see both Mr. Reed and Mr. Hess, if you had um, something you wanted to add first before Mr. Reed. If I may, Madam Chair, um, the volume study just isn't done yet. Um, we're, we're, we actually have that in process. Um, we've got a lot of information from Marburg and we have someone on staff that is able to assess it, but we just don't have all the information yet. So that will be forthcoming. Very good, thank you. And Mr. Reed? Yeah, thank you, Chair Sven. Uh, my, my biggest consideration would just be um, the smell. Uh, it's, it's primarily uh, <coughs> food waste and food scraps. Um, so I think, uh, in consideration of that, maybe a, a, an entirely enclosed series of uh, trash enclosures might be most appropriate, but just looking at locations that can facilitate ventilation, because um, that, that can just be a, a, a deal killer for, um, it can really work against some of the five vitalities real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Harmon, did you have um, comments on the trash issue? No, nothing to add, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So I, I think how I would summarize what we're hearing is that we need a little bit more information and, and more um, work with uh, from staff and, and the uh, volume estimates. Um, I would add to that um that i think undergrounding is a really fascinating option um i would ask that we look into if there might be other the the street level portion of the receptacle if there may be other designs i mean if, <clears throat> if we're thinking that it's only the sleek metal design that might not work but maybe it could be dulled metal or, or a different um a, a appearance to it so i think that's worth looking into if we could have undergrounded trash at this location on the plaza i i think it could solve so many of our problems um another comment i wanted to make back at the idea of the restrooms that i um had forgotten to make is that that might be something that is worthwhile to pursue sooner we we may we may find that um it's a good idea to have restrooms in there now 
um, and it might not need to wait. If we had it in place and it was part of the full design, maybe that's something, um, and not for this meeting to decide, but maybe look at that, that um, restrooms would be a real asset on State Street right there at the plaza. So um, not to put that ahead of anything, but just a consideration. Um, and Mr. Vena, yes. One parting comment. I'm still looking for water in the plaza somewhere. Thank you for that. And we, we do have the splash pad is um, in one of our earlier figures. If we could go back to it was one of the earlier slides when we had sort of the, oh, and that slide we just passed by reminded me also that maybe uh, more than just the trash, the back side of those businesses look like um, not beautiful and, and not like um, the five vitalities that we'd like to encourage in the plaza. Um, not this image, but I'm sorry. For, um, I, um, let's see, so this one. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's work on that beyond just the trash receptacles. There's there's more going on there that maybe could be um, more in line with with what we're looking for. And then to Mr. Vena, that first image of we had the um, this is a, that slide that had the elements that we've established so far that we've we've sort of been working toward with the arcade and there we go. Right there. Um, and I think that gives um, the sort of working model location of where we're having water feature. I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting, so obviously I didn't <clears throat> I didn't notice that. My apologies. No, that's great. That's what we're here to do. Um, are there any other last comments? Um, I want to hear from Mr. Hess if you have what you need from us. If you've gotten enough input to take the next step. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, I believe we have enough to uh, to explore for sure. Uh, thank you for the consensus. Thank you for uh, being an outstanding committee. Uh, you guys are working really well together and you're listening to each other um, and you're learning from each other and it's exciting to see. So we're excited about where this is going and glad you are too. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. It's an excellent meeting and I apologize for going over time. And um, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Yeah.